Thank you. It's very nice to be here. Um, I should probably begin with my usual disclaimer. Uh, anything I say should not be taken in any way to reflect the view of Woody Hayes um, or, or, of any, or of any of his football players, particularly the bigger ones. Um, uh, what, I'd like, what I'd like to talk about today is a, um, uh, basically a cheerful talk about nuclear weapons. Um, <laughs> Um, and, it, and it derives from this book, Atomic Obsession. I just got my author's copies yesterday, so I do a show and tell thing here. <laughs> uh, it, it'll be out in uh, uh, the official publication date is about two weeks, but it's already on Amazon um, at, at a very good discount. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the book is designed basically to be a cure for insomnia. Uh, <laughs> Now, as I'm sure many of you are aware, there's a huge number of books already published uh, that have been uh, very effective cures for insomnia. But this may be the first book ever written which, in which that's the author's basic intent. Um, because uh, for 50 years now and more, uh, we've been suffering under an obsession, I think, with nuclear weapons, which is unjustified and has kept many people from sleeping very well. Uh, for example, uh, Gates, Robert Gates, the de de uh, defense secretary, uh, says that uh, what keeps uh, decision makers awake at night most in Washington these days is uh, worrying about atomic terrorism. So if my book is a success, uh, there'll be a lot better sleep going on in Washington, um, and uh, that's probably a good thing. I uh, can't guarantee it. Um, let me, um, let me, I want to make three or four sort of basic points uh, in this short talk. Um, one is, and this is a really hard thing to do, and no one has really done this, uh, nuclear weapons really aren't that massive. They're horrible, they're the most terrible weapon ever invented, but they're not the end of the world. Uh, this is a picture of Hiroshima, um, and uh, it was obviously very devastating, though you notice there's a building there uh, which is very close to ground zero, which survived. Uh, this is Hiroshima today. Uh, my sister sent me this a few weeks ago and said, uh, actually, who won the war after all? Um, uh, but uh, what's happened is, that uh, 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 continually uh, the effect of nuclear weapons is substantially exaggerated. Let me give you just two, two examples. Um, a, year after a year after Hiroshima, uh, Robert Oppenheimer, who was one of the uh, designers and uh, producers of the atomic bomb, uh, said that if an atomic bomb like that were set off in New, in New York, um, it would uh, wipe out the city. Uh, and, but basically, if the, that bomb had been set off in New York on the ground, it would wipe out about 1% of New York City. Now, that'd be a horrible, disgusting thing, et cetera, uh, but it's not the end of New York City. Uh, and about three years ago, in a book, um, uh, George Tenet, the uh, uh, former director of the CIA, said that one nuclear weapon dropped in the United States would destroy the American economy. And it's that kind of fantastic exaggeration that, that seems absurd to me, and it's been going on for a long time. Uh, if, if a bomber dropped, you know, if, if Peoria had a nuclear explosion, that'd be a hor horrible thing. But the idea that everybody else in the world, would and everybody else in the country would simply stop working is just ludicrous. If anything, 9-11 would suggest we'd pull together even more so. So I, try to, I, I don't want to downplay the significance of Hiroshima or the nuclear weapon or what it could potentially do, uh, but I do want to stress that uh, you can't destroy the planet, uh, for example, though it does happen frequently on television and in movies. Uh, in 1959, in fact, the population of the whole world was wiped out twice uh, in two movies. Um, okay, um, uh, the nuclear weapons have basically been of little historical importance since World War II. Uh, the main argument has been frequently that they prevented a war between the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Um, and I think that's basically nonsense. Both the United States and the Soviet Union had fought World War II. Uh, the Soviet Union lost 20 million people. They've said repeatedly that they don't want to do that again. Now, they don't want to do it again without, with nuclear weapons, even more so, but they never had any thought about, and, and documents since the Cold War make this very clear, any remotest idea of a Hitlerian aggressive war that could only be deterred by nuclear weapons. Uh, in, and, and, uh, that is, that, uh, they, and also, insofar as they were an anti-status quo power, uh, they were interested in revolution, class warfare, and things like that, things in which nuclear weapons are completely irrelevant. Uh, so uh, I think they've been basically uh, insignificant historically. They've been military useless. The countries that have had nuclear weapons have not been able to find any use for them. 
Uh, they've tried in Vietnam, they tried in Korea and so forth. They couldn't find any good targets. Uh, if they found a reasonably decent target, they could be taken care of better with conventional weapons anyway. Uh, and they've mostly been a substantial waste of talent and of money. Um, but they have uh, massively increased our, our anxieties about, about weaponry and, and about, uh, about them. Uh, Albert Einstein famously said, uh, nuclear weapons have changed everything except our way of thinking. My argument is basically they've changed nothing except our way of thinking. Uh, we've had decades and decades of desperate rhetoric, extravagant theorizing about how many MIRVs could bounce on the head of an ICBM, um, and, we've, and we've had um, a huge amount of expenditure on it. During the Cold War, the United States alone spent enough money on nuclear weapons and the uh, methods for carrying them to have purchased everything in the United States except for the land. Uh, the Soviet Union was even worse. Um, so they've, been, they've, been, they've, they've made a big difference in the sense of the way people talk and think and just gesticulate, uh, but I don't think they've made any real historical difference. Um, okay, uh, second issue is proliferation. Uh, there's been massive fears forever that nuclear weapons are going to proliferate to more and more countries. And uh, I've got in the book a zillion quotes going back to certainly 1960 uh, when John Kennedy said, uh, there's going to be 15 or 20 new nuclear powers by 1964 or something like that. Um, and a lot of, he, was in, he was in a lot of company, and there's still, people are still saying that. Um, uh, but basically, proliferations have, uh, 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 nuclear weapons have proliferated extremely slowly. Um, and um, the reason for that, I think, mostly, is that most countries have found there's no advantage to it. Um, and and uh, countries that have had nuclear weapons, that I've already suggested, have found no advantage to them. Countries that have given up nuclear weapons, and there have been a few, have found no disadvantage from it. Uh, so the sl slow proliferation is really quite reasonable. Um, the, uh, the idea that uh, it's very easy to create a nuclear weapon has been, is basically nonsense. Uh, Iran uh, is supposed to have been able to get a nuclear weapon in the next 18 months for the last 20 years. Uh, uh, countries, <laughs> countries that try to get the nuclear weapon uh, basically find it's very expensive, and very, cost, very costly, very difficult. It uh, drains scientific talent like crazy, um, and, um, and it's basically simply not worth it. There's no gain. What, so what? Why do it? Um, and uh, we've overestimated. Uh, there's been a tendency to say that if, if you have the technical capacity to get a nuclear weapon, you would get it, uh, but that was disproved very early on, even by Canada, uh, which was the first country that could have gotten nuclear weapons and basically said, why? Um, and uh, it, is, it, is proved to be it is proved to be typical, not France or England. Um, okay, uh, in addition, the nuclear proliferation that has taken place has had remarkably limited consequences. The biggest case in this is the super rogue of all time, which was communist China in 1964. The director of the Central Intelligence Agency, John McCone, said if they get nuclear weapons, it means World War III. Well, they got nuclear weapons, they still have them, they actually don't have very many of them, they never re even made a nuclear threat. Um, the, um, however, in terms of proliferation, um, what has happened is that the um, um, efforts to stop proliferation have been fairly costly. Uh, efforts particularly with respect to Iraq in the 1990s and now the war uh, with sanctions in the 1990s and now the war that's taken place in this century have cost more lives, the Iraqi lives in that mostly, uh, than were killed at Hiroshima and Nagasaki itself. Um, okay, uh, so nuclear proliferation is not particularly desirable, uh, uh, but it's unlikely to accelerate or prove to be a major danger. Uh, if, Iraq, if Iran wants to get nuclear weapons, uh, what they'll find, I think, like everybody else, is that it's been, you know, it's been a waste of money and effort and talent. Um, and they're basically useless, except for maybe stoking your own ego. Um, the, um, uh, in fact, but I'm in favor of efforts to try to keep Iran from getting nuclear weapons. In part, of course, we'd be doing them a favor um, uh, for that. Um, okay, uh, let me conclude um, uh, with a discussion of the thing that really keeps Gates awake and, and, and a lot of other decision makers uh, in, uh, in, um, in Washington and sort of the issue of the hour about nuclear weapons in the hands of terrorists. There's various ways terrorists could get nuclear weapons, and the one that's considered to be the most common, most likely, uh, by most experts, is essentially um, getting fissile material, stealing it, 
uh, or, or, or bribing the officials and so forth, get fissile material, which would be uranium, highly enriched uranium or plutonium, uh, and then assembling a group of scientists uh, who would work in a machine shop someplace to put a bomb together and then transporting it. Uh, there's other ways they could try stealing weapons themselves, but the weapons tend to be uh, have a lot of safety locks on them. In the case of Pakistan, for example, uh, nuclear weapons are in pieces, two or three pieces. So you have to steal each of the pieces, unlock them, put them together, and somehow uh, have them go off. So it's very easy, actually, to make them basically useless unless you have, you don't only have to steal a bomb, you have to steal a whole bunch of talent. Uh, people who, the people who do the, make the bomb don't know how to set it off. And people who maintain the bomb don't even know how to set it off in most cases. Um, so stealing it is not a very pro a good possibility. Um, the, the, uh, the technique that, um, this is not terribly readable, it's not really designed to be it, be so, but you can, you know, it's in the book. Um, <laughs> uh, cover, covering several pages, four chapters actually. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, what you're dealing with is a, what I tried to do to deal with the, the, the fear of the, the atomic terrorist uh, is look at uh, the difficulties a terrorist would go through in what most experts consider to be the most likely scenario. So the first few things, there are 20 of these, I think they all got on the screen, yeah. Uh, uh, there are 20 of these steps, every single one you have to go through. Um, and uh, there, uh, what happens is that people who talk about atomic weapons, there's a issue, there's an article in the current issue of the both the atomic scientists, uh, for example, uh, b uh, by one of the chief alarmists, um, um, who is, uh, c claims he doesn't sleep very well because of worrying about this, as a matter of fact. Um, and, uh, but, but what they basically say is, well, they'd have to do this. Okay, that'd be difficult, but it's not impossible. True. Uh, then uh, somebody else will say, well, they have to do this, and that's difficult, but not impossible. The problem is, there's a whole bunch of difficult, but not impossible steps you have to do. And, the, and what I did was, I basically wrote a narrative uh, based on a whole bunch of sources about what you'd need to do uh, to, uh, to develop a nuclear weapon if you're an atomic terrorist. Um, and uh, and uh, then, then I sort of bulleted them this way. Initially, I had 25 of these steps, and I thought that's too, you know, aesthetically too big. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I reduced it to 20, and it was quite painful to do that. So I tried to make, make, make each of these separate things, but some of them actually are two or three in, a, in, a, in together. For example, number uh, three or four, uh, uh, one of these is basically uh, uh, you have to make sure there's not it, it, uh, uh, that, that you basically have to uh, 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 if you go into an area to get uh, fissile material, uh, one of the things that can be happen is it can be a scam, um, or it could be a uh, the, the person giving to you doesn't know what they're doing. They could be incompetent, uh, or or they, it could be uh, uh, you know any uh, basically a criminal operation which they're trying to get you. Uh, anyway, the point is there's a whole bunch of steps in this, and I can't go through all 20, obviously. Um, but I would like to point out just sort of two sort of clusters of problems. Uh, one of these is the problem of getting the fissile material. Now, the idea is that since a terrorist group couldn't, a uh, subnational group couldn't make the stuff itself, it has to find it someplace. The usual scenario is Russia. And what you'd have to do then is um, uh, find somebody who can get it for you. For example, a disgruntled... Uh, a Soviet physicist. Um, and uh, so the idea would be then that um, the disgruntled Soviet physicist, a Russian physicist, would give it to you at, at, a, at a price. The problem is, once you've done that, um, you've got somebody who knows what you're doing. And so what the physicist could say, if I give this stuff to them, and, they f they, and then they start to run off with it, they know I know all about them. And this uh, stuff is going to be discovered uh, that's missing that I've given them, and I'm one of the few people who could have given it to them, um, and they know that potentially I could be arrested, <laughs> and I could then tell the authorities ab about, about them, so what are they going to do? They're going to kill me. Uh, so, so the point is, you'd ha basically have to do that, and so you get, and, if, and, and also what, uh, 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 also what you'd get is, uh, uh, if you're dealing with criminals, uh, criminals are extremely good at extortion. I mean, that's the name of the game. Uh, so basically, so if if someone basically knows what if basically someone knows what you're doing, uh, what they can do is um, 
uh, say, well, you gave me $5 million, but I know everything now. How about $10 million? Uh, and so forth. So it basically can escalate that way. Uh, the, second, the second cluster of problems is once you get a machine shop, it's like number 10 there, you, you get a bunch of physicists from all over the place, and you, you erect a machine shop in, say, the slums of Istanbul or something, um, and uh, they, these guys keep going in and out day, and day after day for a year and a half, um, and they're all PhDs in physics, and you ask sort of the people. <laughs> and so you sort of ask some of the people around there, who are these guys going in and out? Uh, well, they're nuclear physicists. We have those all the time in the slums of, <laughs> of, of, of Istanbul. Uh, I mean, just, and then, then, then they basically have to be completely loyal, and they also have to be willing to leave their businesses, for example, the physics department in Pakistan, and no one must get suspicious. You know, he's on vacation uh, for, eight, for eight months. Um, uh, including their, their spouses. Uh, and so, so the whole idea of sort of being able to work that operation becomes difficult. Okay, let me conclude by putting this together. Um, uh, assuming there are 20 of these steps, and, and I think there's really actually more, but let's say there's 20 of these steps. And each of these is difficult but not impossible. I agree. Um, okay, suppose there's a 50-50 chance of being successful at each barrier, which is, that's, that's really, High, high, highly uh, unlikely. That, 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 that's very, uh, that's not difficult but not impossible. That's a pretty good chance. But let's just assume it's 50-50. And yet, uh, what's, the what's the likelihood you could do all of those uh, together? It comes out to be basically one in a million. Now, if you take a somewhat more realistic idea of this, uh, namely there's only one chance in three of success, and in many cases it can be much lower than that, but one chance in three of success over 20 efforts, uh, the chance of being successful becomes one in three and a half billion. Um, so consequently, I think um, it's, you know, not exactly a high probability. Uh, uh, <laughs> so to conclude, uh, just to summarize, um, the activist rhetoric, theory, uh, strategic theorizing, defense budgets, and political posturings have been very much affected by nuclear weapons, but they've had a limited effect on history. Uh, they've been a huge waste of money and effort. Uh, they're not appealing to most states that don't have them. They're out of reach for terrorists, and they're unlikely to shape much of our future. So, sleep well.